Do you know why the symptoms of cocaine addicts are not that different from a love-struck person yearning for someone they cannot see? Do you think that the experience of love at the level of the brain is different from the experience of sex or from feelings of attachment? The sex drive motivates you to look for a whole range of partners, but romantic love is about focusing your mating energy on one person at a time. The sex drive is largely orchestrated by testosterone in both men and women, but romantic love is orchestrated by the dopamine system. The dopamine hits occur even when you're not with the person. You can think of love as an intense obsession, but sometimes it's really an addiction. You think about them all the time. You become sexually possessive. You get butterflies in the stomach. You can read their emails and texts over and over again. But it's an addiction because we found that, in addition to the dopamine system being activated in the brains of people in love, we also found activity in another part of the brain called the nucleus accumbens. This part of the brain is activated in all forms of behavioral addiction, whether it's drugs or gambling or food or kleptomania. So this part of the brain fires up in people who have recently fallen in love. And it really does function like an addiction. Which is why romantic love is a far more powerful brain system than the sex drive. Do you know that casual sex isn't as casual as we think? It's not casual because when you have sex with somebody and it's pleasurable, it drives up the dopamine system in the brain that can push you over the threshold into falling in love. And when you orgasm, there's a flood of oxytocin and vasopressin. These neurochemicals are linked with the attachment system in the brain. So there are all these potential chemical triggers that can get activated when you have sex with someone, whether it's casual or not. Something like one-third of people who've had a friends with benefits relationship have fallen madly in love with that person. So casual sex is not casual. It can trigger these brain systems for romantic love and feelings of attachment. Did you ever experience the unsettling sense that your sexual desires, romantic longings, and feelings of long-term emotional union were racing down different tracks? And perhaps ask yourself, which of these is love? The three tracks may be different brain circuits, the three emotional systems, lust, attraction, and attachment. The role of the prefrontal cortex in humans is to control and direct these emotions, if we so choose. Our sex drive is steered by the hypothalamus, which releases hormones to control estrogen and testosterone in the ovaries and testes. While these chemicals are stereotyped as being female or male, they both play a role in both men and women. It so happens that testosterone increases libido in everyone, but its effects may be less pronounced because of estrogen in women. We often experience sex drive for our romantic partner, sometimes we don't. Or maybe we experience lust for our romantic partner and also someone else. The point is, while lust keeps us looking around, our desire for romantic love makes us stay attracted to one another. Passionate love, limerence, or infatuation, call it what you will, almost all men and women around the world may have experienced love's ecstasy and anguish. When we're romantically attracted to a person, we often lose the ability to reason. We idealize our partner, see beyond their flaws, and not get them out of our minds. Some elope. Some commit suicide because of unrequited love. Some may even commit homicide. We begin to feel that our partner is novel and unique. There's room for only one. High levels of dopamine and an associated hormone, norepinephrine, increase heart rate and make us energetic and euphoric. It's also connected with the loss of appetite and sleeplessness, which means that you can be so in love you can't eat or sleep. The feeling of romantic attraction is like an addiction to another human being. Research has found that the brain regions that light up when drug addicts take cocaine are similar to when we feel attraction. And withdrawal symptoms for addicts are not that different from a love-struck person yearning for someone they can't see. Biologically, the reason for romantic love fading away may be found in how our body responds to drug use. As cocaine users describe it, the brain adapts to excessive input of the drug and requires more and more to produce a high. Love fades and romance fizzles. Unsurprisingly, many cultures in the world do not believe in selecting a lifelong mate based on a fleeting emotion such as love. Maybe it makes sense for love to fade, if a chemically altered state caused by a euphoria or romantic love is similar to mental illness, then long-term exposure can lead to severe psychological damage. If love lasts this roller coaster of emotions, passionate love changes to compassionate love. According to psychiatry professors, couples married for many decades experience something called the rustiness phenomenon. It means that couples get out of the habit of having sex and be incredibly in love. Brain scans have shown the same intensity of activity in dopamine-rich areas in couples who were married for decades and couples in the early stages of romantic love. 
This research tells us that it's still possible to be madly in love with someone after decades of marriage. In any long-term relationship that works, oxytocin is believed to be abundant in both partners. So what the brain says about a happy long-term partnership is be focused on what you do, express empathy for the partner, control your own emotions, have sex with your partner, do novel together, stay in touch, and say several nice things every day, and your brain will help you sustain a long-term, deep relationship.